Hello once again, Niner Faithful, Johnny Dell back with another episode of 49ers Playbook on the channel that's trying to answer the whys and hows of the game. D'Amico Ryans has put together an incredible defense this season. They're the number one overall defense and lead the league in many different categories. First in points allowed, first in yards allowed, first in plays ran against, first in passing touchdowns allowed, first in rushing yards allowed, first in red zone attempts, first in first downs allowed, first in points per drive allowed. All of this has happened while the team has lost a starting cornerback at Emmanuel Mosley, has had linebackers miss time, has had Jimmy Ward come in and play out of position, has been without starting defensive end Samson Ebicom for a number of games, and hasn't had starting defensive tackles Eric Armstead or Javon Kinlaw for much of the season. This even includes the outlier game of giving up 42 points to the Kansas City Chiefs. To accomplish what they have with a full healthy squad would be impressive, but to do it with all the moving pieces has been nothing short of outstanding. So what is it about what D'Amico Ryans has done to create such a dominant defense? We're going to jump to some film and take a look at how Ryans has the defense playing at such a high level. You're watching Johnny Dell's Football Academy. First and foremost, it starts with stopping the run. Ryans has been able to force most teams into being one-dimensional. Not only has the defense been able to stop the run, they've been able to do it while keeping both safeties back much of the time. This gives Ryans the flexibility with his safeties to allow them to disguise single and two high coverages pre-snap without worrying about getting caught out of position or stay in a shell alignment that allows him to shift into a number of different coverages post-snap and force quarterbacks to read and react and slow their progressions. Here, the Rams have numbers in the run game with seven blockers and seven defenders. Ryans has done a good job of timing out what the opponent wants to do and simplifying the assignments. Here, the Rams are trying to run an inside zone and Ryans has dialed up a line slant where Givens, Spence, and Omenahu will slant across and Burks will take over the outside contain. It works perfectly as at the snap, the slant gets Omenahu past the tight end and draws a double team on Spence, who is a practice squad player. That allows Fred Warner to stay clean. Burks then does a good job of doing his job, contain, and with Fred Warner staying clean, he can go and make the tackle. Then the defense swarms to the tackle. It's never just one guy getting to the ball carrier. This is something that shows up repeatedly on film, the defense swarming to the ball to make the tackle. So again, note two high safeties. This time the Rams are going to try an iso play, which is a lead block run with the fullback isolated on a stack player, usually a linebacker, but Jimmy Ward in this case. At the snap, Givens does a good job anchoring just long enough on the double team to keep Fred Warner clean, and Jimmy Ward is gonna play like a linebacker. He sees the hole and players are taught when you see this lead blocker coming, you go and take him on in the hole. And if you can't stand them up, make a pile. That's exactly what Jimmy Ward does. He takes on Skoranek and makes a pile. And then Mooney Ward and Fred Warner are gonna come in and clean up the play. But by the end of the play, you have 10 49ers around the ball. So they've tried to run inside and can't do it. Now they're going to run outside. And again, two high safeties. But playing the run isn't just about the front seven. They get everyone involved in this. So LA is getting the ball in their best player's hands, Cooper Cup. LA wants to sell this like an inside run, get their linemen up on Burks and Warner, and get Cup on the edge. First, Burks and Warner don't buy it. That's good film prep. And they get out in pursuit. Second, Mooney Ward plays this perfectly. He's what's called the force defender and is responsible for forcing the widest play back inside. They've put Ben Skoranek out there who is a good blocker. This is a matchup win for them. But look at Ward engage and then fight and maintain outside leverage on this. With the pursuit, Cup has no inside lane and Ward doesn't give up anything to the outside. So here against the Chargers, again, two high safeties. The Chargers have numbers in the run game, eight blockers on eight defenders. They're running an inside zone. First, right at the snap, Jimmy Ward sees this so well. He sees the hole, hits the hole, and gets up in the run lane before his blocker can get up on him. 
Second, the interior linemen, Givens and Hyder, both do a great job of eating up double teams and keep Warner and Al Shair free. With Ward disrupting the play and the middle plugged up, the Chargers get no real gain. And again, look at the whole team getting in on the stop. Once again, no, the two high safeties. And now with the inside run not there, LA is going to try and run an outside toss. Again, the Chargers have numbers in the run game. First, Omenahu does a great job identifying the outside run and he immediately works to maintain outside contain. He's keeping the lineman's hands off of him and working to force the run back inside to his help. If we back it up, Fred Warner just defeats his attempt at a block and goes and makes the tackle. That's all pro Fred right there. But the pursuit to the ball is infectious on defense. Look at Kerry Hyder here. He's the backside defensive tackle and he's the second guy in on this play and is going to come in with force. Then here against Arizona, we are in single safety, but with the Twins formation, the extra box defender is now Lenore. That's what the Cardinals want. If you're going to have an extra defender in the box, they'd prefer it to be a corner over a safety. So this is a variation on an old power play. The old power play had a fullback that would lead through with a pulling guard. Here, they're going to bring the tight end off the edge and pull the guard, but it's the same basic play. But at the snap, like we saw with Jimmy Ward, Al Shair will see the hole, hit the hole, and take on the tight end in the hole. And that's a heck of a job stuffing the lead blocker in the hole and it plugs up the run. And then again, the entire defense is swarming to the ball. But back to two high safeties again. Here the Cardinals are going to run a split zone. Again, watch Hyder and Givens eat up the double teams, freeing up Greenlaw and Warner who eat up the play. To play with two high safeties, play after play, those interior guys have to be selfless, eat up those double teams, and allow these speedy linebackers to attack the ball. So now the Saints are going to try and get an extra body in the run game with a quarterback power. Now even with an eighth element in the box, the Saints have nine blockers on eight defenders. First, Drake Jackson is going to see the guard pull up the snap and chase him down the line. Second, McGill eats up a double team, keeping Warner clean. Nick Bosa laughs at being blocked by a tight end, but you see how disciplined the defense is. They are swarming to the run lanes and suffocating where the ball carrier can go. In the end, there's five 49ers in on this tackle. Again, two high safeties and New Orleans still can't run the ball. Another inside zone, this time with a little quarterback option and counter block action. They're trying to get Greenlaw and Warner to hesitate for a second so they can get the guards up on the linebackers. But they don't bite, and again, the interior guys do a great job of eating up the double teams. And by the time the front side guard is able to get off, he doesn't know who he's going to pick up. Greenlaw maintains outside leverage, and it's no gain. Fred Mortar ends up making the tackle after the contact, but 849ers are right there at the ball. It all starts with stopping the run and making the other team one-dimensional. Then it's relentless pursuit and violence when they arrive from the linebackers. These guys have speed and relentless pursuit of the ball carrier. Here, Al Shire misses the play early, but doesn't give up and runs the play down and ends it with violence. And this play went viral, but this is a screenplay and watch where Fred Warner comes from and the flying spear tackle. These guys fly to the ball wherever it is. Here Arizona is trying a little bubble screen. Look at Dre Greenlaw. He's the backside linebacker, but watch the pursuit and then the violence when he arrives. Then it's also what these guys bring to the coverage game.
Here, we're in cover three zone and the Saints are going to have a tried and true cover three beater, a flood or sail concept with a vertical route, a deep out route, and a flat route. This is just really well played. First, Warner is going to squeeze the seam to protect Hafonga, and Greenlaw is going to stay in position on the deep out. Warner, though, recognizes the back coming out, knowing he's done his job to squeeze the seam, but hands off the route, identifying what's coming. That, that's really good prep. This speaks to film study, to understanding what he's seeing in front of him, that he doesn't worry about the tight end running a deep in-breaking route, so he breaks off and attacks the running back, forcing an incomplete pass. Then here the Rams are going to run a Shanahan staple, a dagger off play action. A dagger concept being a seam or streak route to clear out and a dig or a deep in behind it. Like I showed, we played a lot of too high and here are going to be in a Tampa 2 zone, so the Rams are going to try and get Fred Warner matching their best guy, Cup, down the field and hit Robinson on a dig. First, Warner doesn't bite on the run fake at all. Great recognition and then watch him read this play. He's reading Cup through to Robinson, and once he sees Robinson break on the dig, he understands exactly what's happening and breaks on the dig. This is such a head smart play. He reads the lineman to know it's a pass, then reads the passing concept, and knows that with him looking like he was matching the seam route that Stafford would throw the dig. There's maybe one, maybe two linebackers who can read things like that in the play, and that's Fred Warner. Then it's the flexibility the two safeties allow. Here we have too high and we're running a cover four palms coverage. If you've watched the channel, you're familiar with the palms, but it's a read adjust defense where it will be either a matching cover four or cover two, depending on the release of the number two receiver. Here LA is trying to attack that by running a deep vertical route on the outside and then a deep out. The reason they're doing this is because the defense will play this like two zone with Jimmy Ward playing as a hook zone player until the number two receiver hits five yards deep and then now he's the curl flat player, and Lenore will be in a deep quarter. So they're going to clear out the outside and then look to hit a deep out with Ward having to adjust late to the outside route. But once Ward sees the number two release vertical, he gains width and depth. You can see Herbert was reading there and that's where he wanted to go with the ball, but Ward takes it away. This causes Herbert to hold the ball and allows the pass rush to get there, and so he just has to check it down. And again, relentless pursuit and tackling by the linebackers. Now you're seeing how it's all coming together. Here is the opening play of the game against the Saints and they empty out. And like I said on the play before, we run a lot of this Palms coverage based upon the read of the number two receiver. Here's just some of the chess match happening at this level. So the Saints know this. They're going to look to take advantage. They run this to the field side where there's a ton of space and come out in really wide splits. This is all to create space. They'll run the number two vertical to trigger the Palms coverage and have Mooney Ward go to a deep quarter coverage. And they're just going to have Taysom Hill run a short curl route. This is all to get an explosive playmaker in space on your corner with the ball in his hands. But Mooney Ward is going to read the number two through to the quarterback, see the throw, and go attack the ball carrier. This is high level execution because you're seeing these are plays where the offense has good plays dialed up schematically, but the defense is still able to stop it. Then when you play so much zone, teams try and take advantage. Here we're in single safety and the Saints are going to run a slide concept, something we run all the time. But on this play, we're actually in man coverage. Again, watch Mooney Ward. He doesn't overreact on the run fake and we get great man coverage on the back end for a small gain. But great recognition and coverage has been a team game. Here the Saints are bunching up the formation and with this formation it's going to trigger the defense to be in cover 2 to the boundary side and Palms coverage to the field side. 
The Saints are going to run a levels plus mesh concept over the middle. The levels is a dig paired with a short in route to put Fred Warner in a vertical stretch. Then the mesh looks to create a horizontal stretch. The Saints will switch the release of the receivers to try and make the read of the release harder. But they read it out perfectly. Warner lets the number two go after squeezing the seam, knowing he'll be picked up by Hafanga, who understands that this receiver is the new number two and it's triggered the palms coverage so Mooney Ward will pick up the outside vertical. This allows Warner and Greenlaw to sit on the short in route. This all causes Dalton to hold the ball and allows Bosa and Ebicom to get pressure. And when Dalton tries to get out, Jimmy Ward has matched the running back out of the backfield. That's really, really good execution across the board. And finally, it's how Ryans uses Warner on all these creative blitzes. Here, he's going to bring Warner up over the guard. This will force a line slide to that side. Then he's going to bring Al Shair and Hafanga on a blitz off the other side to overload, as you'll now have four rushers on three blockers. And Bosa will read the running back so that if the running back leaks out, Bosa will peel off and cover the running back so they can't beat the blitz with a quick halfback outlet and still get an overload. You'll see how the overload works and the tackle gets overwhelmed and doesn't even know who to block. Bosa has the running back and with two unblocked rushers coming at him, Herbert has to throw it away. Here we bring Warner on a blitz and Herbert will outlet it quick. Jimmy Ward comes off and slows down the receiver enough for help to arrive and force a fourth down, but let's back it up and see where these guys came from. This is Drake Jackson and Hafunga who run this play down. That's the swarm mentality, the pursuit to the ball. They don't just assume that Ward will make this tackle, they're flying to the ball. But again, the creative pressures. We're going to bring Warner up on the line and then Burks on the outside. This is going to make sure to force the offensive line and running back to account for every rusher. Then we're going to run double stunts here and it springs Ebicom on a free rush. So what do you do when the line stops accounting for Fred Warner lined up on the line because of all these stunts or he backs out into coverage? You bring him on a straight blitz. So here we're going to just bring a straight rush and watch the guard Warner is over. He assumes Fred is going to drop into coverage and looks to help on a stunt from the inside and Fred comes through untouched. Well, that's D'Amico Ryan's league best defense and what makes them so hard to go against. They stop the run with the front seven, the linebackers fly around in coverage against the run, they play coverage well, they blitz well, and the entire defense swarms to the ball. This defense has a chance to go down as one of the all-time great defenses, especially with the return of Armstead and hopefully Kinlaw down the stretch. And it's so exciting to think about what this team can do during the final couple months of the season. But that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to support the channel in any way, I'll have links for that below. The defense faces a huge challenge this week against the Miami Dolphins, so it'll be a fun game to watch. But until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and go Niners.